Because Jack Del Rio, when he got the job in Jacksonville, wanted to pattern his team just like the Steelers. He wanted them to be both mentally and physically tough, and, and they are. These two teams are really quite similar. Now, this field obviously has been in the headlines before. Uh, what kind of a difference uh, will it make in this game today? Well, it, the field is the same field that we saw come apart three weeks ago in that Monday night game against Miami. There's been a lot of rain the last couple of days. They just uncovered it a couple of hours ago. So it is dry out in the middle, but there is a lot of sand. This is a natural grass field, and of course, now that it has started to snow, which only began about five minutes ago, we'll see how much of that accumulates as the game goes on. All right, let's start with the Jacksonville Jaguars. At the start of this season, head coach Jack Del Rio and his staff made the decision, key decision, to go with David Garrard as the Jaguars starting quarterback. It's a decision that's worked out quite nicely so far. Quite nicely indeed for the Jaguars because even though David Garrard got injured, he hurt his ankle and missed three games, boy does he take care of the football. Look at those stats. Only one interception that, of course, gives him that huge quarterback rating of 103 and change. Now, what he has is a really a nice running game behind him with these two guys, Fred Taylor and Maurice Jones-Drew. Fred Taylor, for a 10-year running back in this league, has been dipped in magic waters, Greg. He can still go. Now, over to the Pittsburgh Steelers and their leader. And in this year of the Valley Hoot quarterback, a guy who may be flying under the radar a little bit is Ben Roethlisberger, who has some nice numbers. Well, how does Tom Brady not get the attention he gets? But Big Ben is really having a wonderful year for the Steelers. And today, he's playing a little hurt. Last week, in that loss to New England, he took a real shot late in the game. He's going to get driven to the ground. Watch coming in from the right. It's going to be Adalis Thomas driving to the ground right there, and he lands on that right shoulder. He did not throw the football at all this week hard. He came out in warm-ups, was able to do it. He is going to start and play today. Nobody ever said Big Ben wasn't tough. He's got a running game of his own, though, in Pittsburgh, and that is Willie Parker, who's leading the National Football League in rushing. Everybody thought Willie, when he came into the league, was just going to be a third-down guy, a spot guy. He has become the man in Pittsburgh, and he leads its rushing attack, and they are bonafide. They are good. Now, if you've got the NFL's leading rusher, logic says you've got a heck of a front line ahead of you. Well, it's been a tradition here in Pittsburgh going back for decades. I don't know if you're talking about Mike Webster, you're talking about Dermonte Dawson, any of the greats that have played for this line. They still can block for the run. One blemish, though, they have given up 38 sacks. That's second most in the NFL, quite uncharacteristic. All right, Dan, both these teams, 9-4, and four, both with the postseason close enough to touch, both pumped up for a huge game in December. Back to Pittsburgh after this message from your local station. today is Jacksonville the nine and four Steelers the nine and four Jacksonville Jaguars coming your way in high definition by Sony next let's go man come on now just keep pounding yeah, yeah, yeah. come on David let's get some pressure yeah. No, it's not just another game. And both these teams, well aware of it. Welcome back to Heinz Field, everyone. Greg Gumbel along with Dan Deerdorf and the rest of our sports crew here in Pittsburgh where the snow continues to fall, obviously. A huge snow squall moved in. 
about five or six minutes ago. <laughs> it has lightened up a little bit, but not much. Well, what you got to love about the Steelers crowd here at Heinz Field, when it started to snow, they erupted into cheers. This is a hearty group. They have had to sit through some games this year in some bad weather. And snow, no problem at all for them. Steelers have won the toss. Jacksonville kicks it away. It is short and comes down at the 22-yard line to Najee Davenport. And Davenport out to about the 35. There's Ben Roethlisberger. Terrific numbers put up by him this season. Approaching 3,000 yards passing, 26 touchdowns throwing, and two more rushing. The offensive line, veteran protection on the left side, and Marvell Smith at tackle, and Alan Fanica at guard. And Roethlisberger can throw to Holmes, Ward, and Miller, or he can give it to the NFL's leading rusher, Willie Parker. I just don't think you could talk enough, though, about that tender right shoulder. He was questionable coming into this game, and we're going to have to see whether he can take a hit or throw deep. Willie Parker. Nothing there. That'll be no gain. It'll be second and ten. The Jaguars, 4-3 defense. Marcus Stroud out with the injury. Rob Meyer moves inside to replace him. Bobby McCray starts at defensive end. Middle linebacker Mike Peterson out with a broken hand. Daryl Smith moves inside. The rookie Justin Durant starts outside. In the secondary, Reggie Nelson pulled a hamstring Thursday in practice. It's a game-time decision, but he starts at safety. Parker tries the other way and there's nothing there either. Justin Durant, number 56, the second round draft pick out of Hampton. Well, I don't think it's any surprise that it's going to be hard initially to run against Jacksonville. A, they're very good against the run. They don't allow even 100 yards a game. But secondly, you've got to game plan it to see if Ben Roethlisberger can beat you throwing the football. When a quarterback doesn't practice all week, you have to challenge him. And here comes his first one. On third and ten, Najee Davenport in the backfield with Roethlisberger, who will work from the shotgun. Running out of time. And goes down. Back at the 27-yard line, courtesy of John Henderson. That is sack number 39 of the season of Roethlisberger. And Ben did a good job of moving around to buy some more time. He just could not find anybody. All right, now he has to move, and yet he does not really get a chance to set his feet and look downfield to throw. A good job by everybody on the Jacksonville defense. Daniel Sepulveda, the rookie punter out of Baylor to kick it away to Dennis Northcutt. It bounces, takes a sideways bounce, and bounces out of bounds at the 40-yard line. That's a 33-yard punt. There is David Garrard. Terrific at protecting the football. Picked just once in 274 pass attempts this year. The Jaguars across the front, left to right. Barnes, Manawai, Meester, Williams, and Tony Pachos. And make no mistake, the Jaguars are here to run the football, and that means steady Freddie Taylor, and he'll be spelled by Maurice Jones-Drew. Steady Freddie. That's it. He's been that and then some. Taylor and Greg Jones in the backfield. Here's Fred Taylor. Plunges ahead to the 45 where Troy Polamalu makes the stop after a five-yard gain. The Steelers' 3-4 defense is missing the outstanding defensive end Aaron Smith. Travis Kirschke starts for him. Impact linebackers. Farrier, the leading tackler. Foot has forced three fumbles. James Harrison has notched eight and a half sacks. And the secondary has Taylor and Townsend on the corners. Troy Polamalu back from injury to join Anthony Smith at safety. And there is the fine safety number 43. Second and five. Fred Taylor. Across midfield, enough for a first down, pulls his way to the Pittsburgh 45. And one of the things Fred Taylor said against a 3-4 defense, you have to be patient when you run. He showed the patience there. That's because you're trying to find the bubble. You're trying to find the soft spot where the linebackers are off the ball and maybe they over pursue. And that's exactly what happened right there. And Fred Taylor is not a long strider. Look how he's keeping his legs under his shoulder pads. Keeping those feet in a place where he's got traction, not slippage. Maurice Jones drew in the backfield. Gerard on 
first down, gives it to the little guy. Oh, found a little bit of a hole and squirts through to the 41 of Boy. the Steelers. What have, we, what have we seen? I know this game is just a few minutes old, but Pittsburgh ran the ball a couple times and got nothing. And Jacksonville right now is running it for four and five and six yards a clip. A lot of guys looking to the sidelines during the Pittsburgh defense, Greg. You said it earlier, and it's worth repeating, Dan. Mike Tomlin told us Jack Del Rio built his team to play up here at this time of year. He said they are not a southern team. They are a huge physical team. They're not a bunch of small, light, quick guys. Jacksonville is a power football team. Second and six. Farrar to throw for the first time. Finds his man. Inside the 30 is Matt Jones for a first down for the Jaguars. 16-yard pickup. And, of course, Matt Jones at 6 feet 6, the former quarterback, really not having a banner year for Jacksonville. But the last couple weeks, he's getting in the game and making the most of his opportunities. Look at the way he covers that ball up, though, with both hands. Very, very smart. The ball's wet. The ball's cold. If you're going to feel a hit, no glamour here, baby. Cover up. Fred Taylor back into the backfield for Jacksonville. Two tight ends as the Jaguars give it to Taylor again. Inside the 25 before he stacked up James Harrison leading the charge. Well, this field, I think, is going to be a story all day long. We're going to follow it. That's the feet of Fred Taylor as he tries to cut back into the hole. I think the traction, by and large, right now is pretty good. They kept this field covered. It's pretty dry out there in the middle of the field. There's some sandy spots on the sidelines, but I think the middle of the field right now is holding up. For how long, we'll see. Second and eight. Here comes the blitz. That pass incomplete, making the defensive play is number 26, Deshea Townsend. Well, Deshae Townsend does a good job of sitting all over this pattern because he knows the blitz is on and he knows that the ball's coming out in a hurry. That's where a cornerback can really take a chance and gamble when he knows the blitz is on. Now, Garrard facing the first third down of this drive. He is the NFL's number one passer in third down situations. But he doesn't want a sack here because that could make a field goal really difficult. Whatever you do, don't get sacked. That's complete. Inside the 20-yard line is Maurice Jones-Drew, driven out of bounds by Ike Taylor, and that will bring up fourth and short. But some valuable yards for your field goal kicker. We were talking about this. The way the field is configured, we're told it's a crosswind today. Yeah, the field is north and south. Uh, the Steelers uh, right now are defending the north end. But the field, it's, Greg is right. You can see right there the, the banner are moving right to left. So we'll see if Scobie plays it that way. Scobie, 11 of 12 in the field goal department this season. This is a 36-yard attempt. Fumbled snap a little bit, but he got it away, and it is good. Impressive opening drive by the Jacksonville Jaguars. 9.36 to play in the first. Jacksonville by three. Back at Heinz Field, there's Jacksonville scoring drive, doing what you know Jack Del Rio wanted them to do. Come in and get on the board first. They lead it 3 nothing, and the ball blows off the team. And, you know, David Garrard had a couple completions in there, but they ran the ball very well. They love to get off to a start where your offensive line gets the run for a couple first downs. A lot of confidence comes out of that. Here's Alan Rossum awaiting the kick. This is Rossum from the 15. And met hard at the 30-yard line and driven down. Well, Jacksonville has the lead, and a lot of it because Adam Podlish, the holder. Look at that. Great job by the rookie of setting it up for Scobie, who gives Jacksonville the lead. Back in Pittsburgh, first down. 
at their own 30-yard line for the Steelers. They trail 3-0, quick pass out to the side. That's complete to Santonio Holmes, and Holmes gets maybe a yard or two. Well, what happens when you pair a good team with a good home crowd? Well, you get a record of 7-0. and And the Steelers not only winning at home, but look at that. They're winning by nearly 17 points a game. So Mike Tomlin, their head coach, uh, he's enjoying the home folk love him. They've the, never seen him lose. This is the fourth <laughs> time this season that the Steelers have fallen behind the first here at home. San Francisco, Cleveland, Cincinnati all scored first earlier this season, but the Steelers have won all seven of their home contests. Roethlisberger pump fakes and delivers it short across the 35 to Willie Parker. That'll be shy of a first down. We go to JB in New York. James. Hey, Greg and Dan. First series for the Jets, second and 10. Clemens make that lemons picked off by Eugene Wilson a five-yard return for the score take a look Kellen Clemens slammed to the ground by Richard Seymour injured Brad Smith in for quarterback for the Jets back to Greg and Dan all right JB and there you see the bear facts for the New England Patriots as we go to a third and one for Roethlisberger and Ben was going to try to run a quick play this was they did not huddle he did this all from the line of scrimmage and look he ends up using the whole play clock and he's going to throw Roethlisberger now going to take off and run and has enough for the first down out to the 42 yard line well I can tell you one thing whatever Mike Tomlin was thinking about going into this game Ben Roethlisberger taking off with the ball on third down and running for a first down and instead of sliding going in head first Oh, baby, I'm not sure that's what Mike Tomlin wants him to do. But Big Ben is Big Ben. Look at him get Heath Miller out in front of him to make a block. Hey, when you're 6'5", 245 pounds, I guess you just don't care. Now on first down, Willie Parker trying to bounce to the outside. Escape the tackle there, and look at him go. Across midfield down the sideline, and it's another first down for the Steelers. Everybody in the NFL knows when Willie Parker bounces, he always bounces to the outside. Jacksonville has the right defense. They just don't execute the tackle. Here comes the bounce. There's the free man, and there's the missed tackle by Brian Williams. The defense was set up. If he tackles Willie Parker, he actually loses yardage. But that spin was sweet. What did Rasheen <laughs> Mathis tell us last night? Oh. Willie Parker gets to the edge and then becomes a problem for the corners. That move was, that was a 10 out of 10. This is Parker. Inside the 40 to about the 37 of Jacksonville, where Brian Williams makes the tackle. Guarantee you, every team in the league works on defending Willie Parker at the edge. But again, you know, this was a guy nobody thought that he was able to be the every down back. Already over 300 carries on the year. He leads the league. He's shown remarkable durability. Pick up a five. And on second and five, the Steelers spread the field with five wide receivers. Play clock to three, two, one. And Roethlisberger gets the ball. Steps up. Throw. Incomplete. That pass intended for Santonio San Holmes. Third and five. Well, they had Najee Davenport over there as well. I, I'm suspecting that either Holmes or Davenport wrong, ran a wrong pattern. There were two guys in roughly the same area. You might think, well, geez, that makes it easier for the quarterback to throw to one of them. Well, they bring defenders with them when they're bunched together like that. It doesn't work. Third and five for Pittsburgh. Ben is changing everything. Play clock down to three, two, one. He barely gets the snap off, but he does. Stepping up, trying to spin out of trouble, and he can't get away. Brent Hawkins, number 57, the second-year man out of Illinois State. Boy, get him a lot. Paul Spicer was the first. Look at the top, number 95. We're going to get Marvell Smith. Spicer's the first guy. Ooh, he almost gets a hand. He's around the feet of Ben Roethlisberger. And then for the cleanup comes Hawkins. But credit Paul Spicer. He's the guy that collapsed the pocket. 
So the rookie, Daniel Sepulveda, will kick again. Second sack of the day for Roethlisberger. Northcutt, fair catch called for and made it about the 13-yard line. 5.41 to play in the first. Jaguars with the ball in the three-point lead. I was amazed at how this crowd just erupted into a roar when that big snow shower hit here. Yeah, much, <laughs> much, much the way I did. Oh, yeah. Maurice Jones drew in the backfield for the Jacksonville Jaguars as they begin at their own 14-yard line. And here's number 32. What did nose tackle Casey Hampton say about him? <laughs> he's, he said he's a, just like a fast bowling ball. He said you just can't find him. I, you know, I, we asked Hampton if it's really a problem to find a running back that's, you know, that's only 5'7". He said you better believe it is. And then he says you'll see him, you know, beat linebackers all the time because he's on them before they see them coming. They don't get a chance to set their feet and square their shoulders. They're taking him on sideways. Second and six. Quick drop, quick slant, and what a catch made by Ernest Wilford. What a throw by David Garrard, and it's a first down. Boy, that's a chance for a receiver to show his toughness. On that slant, you know you're going to get hit. You know the ball's in tight quarters, and you talk about where 100% concentration is needed. That's a good display of it right there. Wilford to the sideline, along with Maurice Jones, Drew, Fred Taylor back in. Look at that, 36 receptions, no touchdowns for Ernest Wilford. On first down, it's Taylor. Straight ahead, and a penalty marker flies our first flag of the day. Gene Steratore is our official. And he threw the flag himself. Holding. Offense. Number 89. 10-yard penalty. Replay first down. Tight end, Mercedes Lewis. There are things have been going along swimmingly for the Jags so far. And yeah. That's the first setback there. Casey Hampton made that last tackle, Dan. <laughs> it's pretty funny. He was telling us he, at last he feels he's going to get a chance to play football today because last week all he did was spend wasting time chasing Tom Brady. Well, Tom Brady and the Patriots are, are, are in the spread formation all day. They don't run the ball at all. I mean, he really, he, he could put towels on his shoulders instead of shoulder pads. He didn't even need them. First and 20. Throwing near sideline, and that's incomplete intended for Matt Jones, or at least Jones is the closest to it. That time David Garrard took a hit at the end of the play, and he went down. Here comes James Harrison, and he's held big time. <laughs> no flag. He ends up on the back of Garrard's legs, but man, how there wasn't a holding flag thrown on that. He actually took a seat rather than went down. Yes. Um, that's where it must be very frustrating to be a defensive player and be held like that and, and no flag appears. That's, there's no way that doesn't get you to the boiling point. Second and long yardage. Here's Taylor. Trying to reverse field and nowhere to go. Let's check in once again at the NFL today, James Brown. JB. Hey, Craig and Dan, balmy conditions where you are, but take a look in Cleveland. Remember this when you were playing as a kid, just like you drew it up, Derek Anderson and Braylon Edwards deflected to Joe Juravicius. 25-yard gain, that led to a Phil Dawson 35-yard field goal. 3-0 Cleveland. Ah, back to balmy Pittsburgh. Greg and Dan. JB, I'll tell you, when the weather like that got, got like that outside, I went indoors. Hey, James, uh, you, yeah, you got it, baby. It is balmy here. Unless you're Jacksonville facing third and 20. Here's Garrard. Over the middle. Incomplete. Palomalu Ooh. was there to break it up. Ooh, Troy Palomalu. I'm not He had his hands on that football. He not only broke that up, I thought he was going to intercept it. David Garrard throws into a whole lot of traffic. 
Well, I take it back. Pull him out. That ball was way out of his range. He did a great job of deflecting it. No way he could catch that, but look at the job he did of getting a hand on that ball and knocking it away. Boy, that was beautiful. Podlesh, the rookie punter, from deep in his own territory, Alan Rossum awaits the kick. High floater, and it'll float out of bounds. Apparently, very close to midfield. 2.52 to play in the first. 35-yard punt, 3 nothing Jags. Hey, you know, at NFL.com slash SuperAd, you can watch NFL players tell their personal stories and help decide what will be this year's NFL Super Bowl commercial. NFL.com slash SuperAd. Pretty good position for Roethlisberger and the Steelers at midfield. Their first two possessions, 16 total yards. Roethlisberger, play fake, on the run now. Hit as he got rid of it, Santonio Holmes is deep and complete. And Ben got buried. Oh, boy. And he's coming out. Is he coming out or is he just coming over to talk? Watch at the end of this play. Ben can't find anybody from behind. And again, lands right on that right shoulder. Landry drives him into the ground. And Ben is back in the huddle. Man, he went, ran over to the sidelines. Had a quick consultation and right back in. 2.44 to play in the first. Second and 10. Quick drop this time. Quick slant. And making the diving catch is Santonio Holmes. He'll be about two yards or so shy of the first down. You know, Holmes kept rolling after the catch, and that was smart. He kept rolling until he was touched. That's the kind of wind we're dealing with. And you can see how it moves. But watch Holmes here at the end of this. You know, until you're touched, the play's not over. That's very smart of him to keep moving. He picked up another two yards on the roll. So now third and two, and Najee Davenport checks into the Pittsburgh backfield. Not in the last five games have the Steelers registered a touchdown in the first quarter. Well, they've only been averaging about two touchdowns a game in those last four games. They're in a bit of a scoring drought. Third and two. Roethlisberger over the middle and complete. Santonio Holmes. Roethlisberger, I think he expected him to get there a little sooner yeah, than he, he did. He was expecting Holmes to break that off into the middle earlier than he did. Ben was throwing to a spot. He thought Holmes was going to be there. Holmes rounded it off and went deeper. You know, a lot of quarterbacks will say, oh, geez, that was my fault. I made a bad throw. That body language by Ben there, I don't think that's what he was saying. So Northcutt deep again. Sepulveda pops it up in the air, and it is going to drift inside the 10-yard line and be down there by the Steelers' special team. A minute 38 to play, and so far, Ben Roethlisberger a little frustrated by a stout Jacksonville defense. A minute 38 to play in the first quarter here at Snowy Hines Field. And the Steeler faithful looking for their defense to do something with their field position. Jacksonville starts from its own nine-yard line. Starting to give to Maurice Jones Drew straight ahead and not much there. Well, Ben Roethlisberger has had, I think, a little more active of a first quarter than he was looking for. Been under pressure. There's the, the first sack of the game. Again, here he is escaping, trying to get away, but again, can't find the receiver. And then this time he's going to get hit by Derek Landry from behind, and he hits the ground pretty hard. Three of six for 16. More importantly, are the hits that Ben Roethlisberger, ben Roethlisberger is taking on that store shoulder. Second and nine. Fred Taylor back into the backfield. And Taylor going to get the handoff. And the Steeler defense stands up and says no. Out to the 11-yard line. It'll be third and eight. Well, after some success early, Pittsburgh has tightened things up on the defensive front. 
Fred Taylor trying to go off left tackle, tries to slide back, and that's a good job right there. Larry Foote, the linebacker, and his gap control. That was his gap. He patiently stayed there. Fred Taylor cut right back into him. We're in the final 17 seconds of the first quarter. Third and eight. Gerard with good protection, and now he's on the move. 15. Out to the 19-yard line and close to a first down. Troy oh, Polamalu. What a stop. What a play by Polamalu. I thought David Gerard was going to pick up the first down easily. That's the end of the first quarter. Measurement coming up. 3-0 Jacksonville. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Welcome back to Pittsburgh for the start of the second quarter. The measurement showed Garrard coming up inches shy of a first down. And Garrard and the offense were on the field, appeared to be ready to go for a first down. But now Jack Del Rio sends the punting unit on. Oh, Jack being a little tricky. I thought David Garrard was going to pick up a first down easily. What a play by Troy Polamau. There he is deep. Look how far away he is. But watch him close. Look how he passes his teammates, comes all the way up there to clip the legs out from under David Garrard. Man, that, you know, that won't be on the stat sheet other than a solo tackle for Troy Polamalu. But that forces a punt. What a big, big play by 43. And on the, on the near oh. horizon for Pittsburgh is good field position. They are a different defensive team with their playmaker, Troy Polamalu, back after three weeks out. That's Alan Rossum. Just beyond midfield, awaiting the punt from Adam Podlet. The wind on that field is really swirling. Greg, you notice the flags on the goalposts are both blowing in different directions. Now Gene Steratour is... Uh, Bringing things to a halt. Looks like you're getting the chains yeah. all set. I think the, the, the chain crew on the sideline had some trouble moving from one end of the field to the other. You've got to have them on both sides. There looks like they're finally getting organized. Oops. You mentioned it earlier. We saw a shot of Jack Del Rio over there on the sideline. He said there's a certain mentality you have to bring to a game against the Pittsburgh Steelers, and he called it the two chin strap mentality. Darn right. Bring an extra one because the hitting's going to be so hard, your first one's liable to get broken. And he's not kidding. They do snap. High snap. Just got it away, but it's not much of a kick at all. And the Steelers are going to come out of this with great field position. Well, the snap was high and left. And it's really a pretty good job of handling this ball. You see it? And then he bobbles it. And then almost misses it. The rookie almost misses the ball. That's a 13-yard yeah. punt for Podlesh. And, and the wind, you know, the wind caught that ball a little bit and moved it a little bit to the left, and it was just enough where now Podlesh Pittsburgh, couldn't handle it cleanly. Pittsburgh starts at the Jacksonville 31, and it's three previous possessions. The Steelers have punted three times, including two three-and-outs. Parker, left side, inside the 25, inside the 20 and out of bounds for a first down. Well, that's that's where Heath Miller, the tight end, becomes a guard. Because Heath Miller is going to see him. Watch that little turn. Here he comes back again. Now he becomes the lead blocker. He looks like Jerry Kramer coming around the corner, being a, a lead guard. That's a really interesting way of doing it. He comes around and gets a hit on Daryl Smith. Enough that he can't get Willie Parker. Good job there by Heath Miller. That, you know, we all know he's a great receiver, but that's pretty good blocking. 13 yard pickup, second and 10. Roethlisberger, or first and 10. Roethlisberger pulls it down, still looking, and throws it away. But takes another hit. Again, Ben Roethlisberger hits the ground. Bobby McRae was in there, but Ben can't find anybody. He's got time, he's planted. 
He cocks it, but then pulls it back in. And there's McCray who lands on top of him. Luckily, he landed flat on his back of him instead of on his shoulder. But, wow, Ben's taken a lot of contact so far in this game. We'll remind you again, the right shoulder is sore. Roethlisberger practiced very little this week. On second and ten, pass to the sideline is incomplete. And that pass intended for Nate Washington. Roethlisberger now three out of eight throwing the football for 16 yards. Well, I think there was some underneath coverage by the Jacksonville Jaguars that forced Ben to have to throw that ball way to the outside. Mike Tomlin. He's unflappable. He'll look like that in the fourth quarter as well. Pittsburgh one out of four on third down. Throwing over the middle inside the five. Touchdown to Heath Miller. That ball got tipped by somebody. I saw it change direction on its way to Miller. It sure looked like somebody touched that football. Let's watch it from behind. Right there. Brent Hawkins actually hits the football, and somehow it continues on to Heath Miller. Oh, wow. Talk about bad luck for Jacksonville. You don't see that every day. Jeff Reed for the extra point attempt. The penalty markers are down. This is going to be a false start against Pittsburgh. False start. Offense. Number 68. Five-yard penalty. We will attempt to try again. Again, Ben Roethlisberger throws that ball and Brent Hawkins that... You don't see a guy get a hand on it like that and then have it still continue on where it was supposed to go. That's a ball that's got a little juice on it. Great job by great job by Heath Miller of staying with that football after it was altered in its flight path. So now this extra point attempt will come from 25 yards out. And it's good. 14-13 to play here in the first half. Ben Roethlisberger's touchdown pass gives Pittsburgh a 7-3 lead. Off the 13-yard punt by Adam Podlesh, Pittsburgh goes 31 yards in four plays. Heath Miller with a seventh touchdown catch of the season. And the Steelers grab the lead for the first time today, 7-3 with 14-13 to play. Here in the first half, and Troy Palomalu, Dan, you're, he's the one who set it up. Sure did on that tackle of David Garrard, bringing him up a foot short in their quest for a fourth down. That forced the punt. He wasn't in on the touchdown play, but his play got it all started, giving the Steelers great field position. Maurice Jones Drew back at his own 10 yard line. It'll bounce once, go into the end zone for the touchback. And so Jacksonville will go on the offense, trailing for the first time today at 7 3. Back to Pittsburgh after this. Some of the hardy faithful sitting out here in the cold and the wind in Heinz Field. Not many no-shows in Pittsburgh. They've uh, they've sat through more than a few blustery, snowy afternoons here. There's number 28, a fixture in Jacksonville for 10 seasons now. Boy, hey, imagine, and, and, and this was brought up to us by players and coaches alike, Imagine if he hadn't missed as much time injured as he has been. Yeah, he's basically missed two full seasons with injuries. Gene Steratore there talking about something with Jack Del Rio. There's 
something going on with the communications systems with the Jaguars with the coaches headsets now Gene is coming over to talk to the Pittsburgh sideline if one team loses theirs they make the other team stop using theirs to equal it out so while Gene Steratore and Mike Tomlin discuss the matter we go to JB in New York James hey Greg and Dan nonverbal miscommunication here as a snapper for Buffalo Ryan Neal sends the ball flying over the head of punter Brian Mormon kicks it out of the end zone for the safety five nothing baseball score Cleveland on top of Buffalo Greg Gumbel Dan Deardorff all right JB and look at the wild card picture boy how good a job has Romeo Cornell and his staff done this year well, it's finally come together in his third year. And boy, he was taking a lot of heat at the beginning of this season. And you're right, it's nice to see it pay off. So Gene Steratore is satisfied. Apparently so is Mike Tomlin. Well, maybe things are back working on the Jacksonville sideline. So Jacksonville first down their own 20-yard line. Play fake, Gerard throwing near side, and that's complete across the 25 to Dennis Northcutt once again to James Brown in our studio. Greg and Dan, Kansas City is eliminated from the playoffs, but the Chiefs have won four of the last five with Tennessee here. Brody Coyle hooking up with Sammy Parker. Nice reverse move. Good hustle to tie it up against Tennessee at seven back in the second. Back to Greg and Dan. Tennessee desperately trying to stay alive. Meanwhile, there's a picture of the AFC West where San Diego leads the way at eight and five. Smart play last time, throwing the ball on first down. Look at the top. There's Polamalu right up on the line of scrimmage. This is Taylor. Taylor off to the races. Midfield. 40. And shoved out of bounds at about the 35-yard line by Anthony Smith. And Fred Taylor and the Jags run right at Troy Polamalu, even though he's on the line of scrimmage. Talk about the eighth guy in the box, but he's going to get blocked. He comes in, and he really gets picked off by Ernest Wilford, a wide receiver. And then Anthony Smith has his hands full, literally <laughs> has his hands full of Fred Taylor. 55 yards on the day for Taylor. Maurice Jones drew into the lineup now. First down at the Pittsburgh 35. Garrard looking for a receiver. Tipped in, almost intercepted. Larry Foote. Larry Foote got a hand on it. Yes, he did. David Garrard starts looking a little left, but then really focuses on the right half of the field. And again, now this is where it worked out for a linebacker tipping the ball. That time foot almost created an interception. We just saw a Pittsburgh touchdown where Brent Hawkins of the Jaguars tipped the ball, but it still ended up a touchdown. Fred Taylor still catching his breath on the sideline. Maurice Jones drew in the backfield with Greg Jones on second and ten. He's talking to the trainers. Garrard. That's incomplete. North cut the intended receiver and be third down. Well, he had a Pittsburgh pass rusher right in his lane. It forced Gerard to try to sidearm it out there and just couldn't do it. Well, what the Jaguars need to do is convert a third down. 0 for 3 so far today. Because they haven't done it yet. You're right. And as we mentioned earlier, David Garrard came into the action today, the number one rated quarterback on third down in the NFL. Garrard throwing incomplete. Reggie Williams had possibilities and couldn't hold on. There was only a four-man rush. They gave Garrard a little time. Now, he delivered... That ball didn't have a whole lot on it coming to Reggie Williams, and it appeared to be fuddling. Not a good day for punters today. Podlesh averaging 22 and a half yards a kick for two punts. Well, that's a unique 20-yard punt here. That would actually be good. I actually think he got one inside the 10. 
and rolling to about the seven and a half yard line. About 12 and a half minutes to play here in the first half. 7 3, Pittsburgh. Hey, the CBS Sports Store is the perfect place to save big on gifts for all the sports fans in your life. Beat the crowds by shopping online for all officially licensed NFL apparel. Just click on shop at cbsports.com. Quick pass out here to the side to Hines Ward, and Hines Ward hit hard as he reached the 11-yard line by Justin Durant. Durant pressed into service because Daryl Smith, who usually plays outside, is playing middle linebacker in place of the injured Mike Peterson. And that's Hines Ward. That's his first catch of the day. First time he's gotten involved in the offense. Remember last time that Jacksonville had poor field position. Pittsburgh parlayed it into a touchdown. Let's see if Jacksonville can force a three and out from the Steelers. Second and eight, Willie Parker, right side. Running room. First down close to the 20-yard line. Boy, again, Willie Parker gets to the edge and exploits it. Aims at right tackle, but then he's got some really good blocks. Matt Spath, the tight end, really got the block, the seal to the inside that Parker took advantage of by cutting it outside. Man, when fast Willie gets on the edge, that... That frightens defensive coordinators. What well, do you remember last night? He's talking about who has helped him become a total, complete football player. Jerome Bettis. He's talking about on and off the field. On first down, Parker again. To about the 20. Well, Jerome was quite an influence on, on, on Willie Parker. And, and why not? If you're a rookie and you get an opportunity to not only be a teammate but play the same position as a Hall of Fame guy like Jerome Bettis. And anyone who's ever met Jerome Bettis knows what an outgoing, you know, absolutely gregarious guy he is. I, at least Willie Parker, I give him a lot of credit for, I give him credit for realizing how fortunate he was. Roethlisberger looking at a second and ten as the snow continues to swirl. Free. Looked like he fell on it. Paul Spicer was in on Roethlisberger. Ooh, lucky break. Lucky break for the Steelers. And you're right, Spicer from behind. Ben doesn't know he's coming. He's going to come from the left. And he's intentionally going to go for the strip. There it goes. Boy, look at that tomahawk come right down on the football. And what a fortunate bounce right back to Ben. How anxious was Paul Spicer oh, oh. to play this game? Oh, oh. He said, it's going to be tough. It's going to be physical. I'm going to love it. He said, I love playing Pittsburgh. Now a third and 15 facing Roethlisberger. Going to give to Davenport. And Davenport trying to find running room and bought down at the 10 by Sammy Knight, the 11th year veteran safety. Boy, the crowd booing. I, I guess they're booing the call. I guess they wanted Ben to put it in the air. But now it's going to be Jacksonville's turn to see if they can get some decent field position. They sure haven't done much today. They do have one field goal, but they've had some good field position opportunities before and got nothing from it. Now, instead of trying to dunk one inside a 20-yard line, Sepulveda is going to see if he can get some yardage out of his own end zone. Line drive kick and not bad. Back north cut up. Eludes one tackler. Picking up some blocking and still on his feet. Cuts it back out across the 40 to about the 43-yard line. A very nice return by Dennis Northcutt. 908 to play in the first half. Jacksonville on offense. As promised, snow here in Pittsburgh. 908 to play in the first half. The score reflecting the condition. 7-3 Steelers. But out of that last exchange, Jacksonville comes out of it with good field position. The ball at their own 44-yard line. There's Fred Taylor, who is a yard shy of 1,000 for the season. Taylor comes up shy. Well, the one thing about Fred Taylor, he is explosive. Look what he's done this year against Houston. This went for 76 yards. Then later in the season against Buffalo, this one went 50 yards for a touchdown. 
Last week in Carolina, he went 80 yards for a touchdown. And then today he broke off a 38-yard one just a little bit ago. Fred Taylor, always a threat to go all the way home. And he got one yard on yeah. that last carry for his seventh career 1,000-yard season so far. On the screen, Maurice Jones drew. He loses a couple of tacklers and out to about the 49. And you talk about a home run hitter, Maurice Jones Drew is one of those. And Pittsburgh has done a good job of keeping him out of it. And boy, are they glad to have Paul Amalo back. There he is right on the edge. It's a delayed blitz. He comes in now. He's not satisfied. You, you know, a lot of guys say, well, my job's over. Heck no. Go get in on the action and make the tackle. Man, you love to watch this guy play. Is that called a motor, Dan? That's a motor. That's a high revving motor. Jacksonville 0 for 4 on third down. Gerard looking at a third and five. Here they come. Quick pass slant incomplete. Close to being picked off by the Shades. Now, converting on third down. They're they're absolutely anemic on third down. Oh, that's face to face. <laughs> Larry Foot, Vince Manwai. They're they're in there talking it up. But uh, Greg on third down. They haven't even been close. I mean, they have really looked sad on third down. Pittsburgh is all over them. Jacksonville's fourth straight punt. See Podlesh comes up with. Inside the 10 is Allen Rawson. 15. Oof. Hit hard, short of the 20-yard line. That hurt. Oh, and Rossum, he's not bouncing up really quickly from that. Brian Ewu with the hit. Let's give a listen. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> that hurt. So from the 19-yard line, Roethlisberger works and gives to Parker. Escape with one tackler, and here's a penalty marker flying in. Hey, Gene territory runs a good football game. Holding offense, number 61. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. Replay first down. We saw Gene territory before the game. I said, I said, keep warm out there. He said, I noticed you didn't say keep, don't cut to keep dry. <laughs> no chance of that. Sean Mahan, the center, the guy that Gene flagged for holding. And boy, you really. In your own end of the field, backed up to your own goal line. Penalties are not good. Now Roethlisberger looking at a first and 19. Seven guys up front for Jacksonville. Parker. A nice cut across the 15 out to about the 17 or 18 yard line. Brian Williams and Terry Cousin combining for the tackle. He's going to get a hole and it's Brian Williams, I think, the main factor in bringing him down right there. That's Brian Williams who comes in right here and cuts the legs out from underneath Willie Parker. That was close to being an explosion for Parker. Jacksonville was very close to finding out why they call him Fast Willie. Second and 12. Roethlisberger with time this time and wide open and in and out of the arms of Heinz Ward. Man, that is the most open receiver we have seen so far in this game. I'm not sure if that's a smile or a grimace on the face of Heinz Ward. Look how open he is. He didn't catch it with his hands. He allowed the ball to hit his body and then it ricocheted away. Don't see. That's a photo op. Seldom do you see that. Third and 12. Play clock down to two, down to one, and they barely get it off. Roethlisberger under pressure and on the move. Rolling right, throwing, and that's incomplete. Bouncing out in front of Hines Ward. That'll bring on the punting unit. <laughs> Pretty good defensive stand by the Jaguars, aided by a Ward drop. 
Roethlisberger now 5 out of 12 for 38 yards. Sepulveda to kick. Dennis Northcutt back at his own 35. Good kick by the rookie. Northcutt. Can't lose that first tackle and he's down at the 31 yard line. William Gay, the rookie out of Louisville, making the special teams play. Well, there's David Garrard, what he's done today. Like Ben, he's not anywhere near 50%. And David Garrard, the different, he is the starter this year. He is the man. As Greg said earlier, Jack Del Rio anointed him in training camp. Last year, look at that, only one more touchdown than interception this year. It's, that's, that's good stuff. Again, he missed three games with an ankle injury. The ankle's not a factor at all now. On first down, Garrard to throw near side. That's complete to Northcutt. And that's across the 40 to the 42. I remember Jack Del Rio telling us earlier this season, Dan, he said, we looked at the film on Garrard, we looked at the film on Byron Leftwich, and everybody on the staff felt that Leftwich had hit a plateau, whereas Garrard was continuing to improve. I think you're exactly right. More of an upside. There's a huge difference in the mobility factor. David Garrard can move around, actually run with the ball. Byron Leftwich is a statue. I mean, he is a pocket passer, and he is not a guy that's effective at all on the move. On first down, Maurice Jones-Drew across the 45, close to the 47-yard line. Casey Hampton getting, getting a little of that action that he was looking for. Well, the bowling ball gets a chance to roll through the Steelers. Five feet seven. Actually, his nickname with the Jags is Mighty Mouse. But not a whole lot of uh, no, not a whole lot of room in there. Of course, I really enjoyed Casey Hampton calling him a bowling ball. I mean, if Casey Hampton was two inches shorter, he'd be perfectly round. So I, but I didn't, but I didn't tell him that. <laughs> Second and five, Gerard over the middle, and that's complete across midfield. We got a late flag in the backfield. Pass was complete to Maurice Jones-Drew, and James Ferrier made the stop. Here's Gene Steratore. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Number 53. Contact with the quarterback below the knee. 15-yard penalty out of the end of the run. First down. Clark Hagan's guilty of the penalty that's going to move the ball a pretty good distance for Jacksonville. All right. The quarterback is protected below the waist if you've got a clear run at him. Oh, and they call Clark Hagan's. He, he crawled his way towards the quarterback. You know, that's a really difficult position. You're going after the guy. You're doing everything you can do to drive your way towards the quarterback. That is that is not where I think Clark Hagan's intentionally tried to hit the game. Here's Maurice. To about 30. Does that make sense, Greg? Well, I mean, sure, because what you're saying is the guy's got to get off the ground right. in order to hit the quarterback. I mean, he's down on all fours. He's just really clawing after him. The play is still alive. And it's, yes, he did hit him in the knees, but I... I don't think he intentionally tried to do it. I think he was going after a quarterback trying to get a sack. Seems to me at best what the defender can do is just reach out and grab with his hands. You know, that's, you know, that's asking a lot when you're going 100%. Fred Taylor back in, second and seven. Here's Taylor. Inside the 30, still on his feet. To about the 26 yard line. You know, Jack Del Rio was telling us it could have been a bad situation. Maurice Jones drew drafted so high by the organization. A young running back comes in. Fred didn't but, like it. Oh, Fred didn't like <laughs> it at all. But what Maurice Jones drew did was went to Fred Taylor and said, I want to learn from you. And he did. He almost like Willie Parker and Jerome Bettis. And, and it's that kind of a relationship. And let's not kid ourselves. His presence, talking about Jones drew, has inspired Fred Taylor. It's Fred Taylor's got a fire on him now. And keeps his legs fresh. Yes, it does. 0 for 5 on third down. Taylor looking for first down yardage and didn't get there. Troy Palomalu. It's hard to win a ball game if you can't sustain drives by converting third down. There's Palomalu from about seven yards off the ball. That's his gap. And, man, that's how you fill it. 
and on fourth down, the Jacksonville offense is still on the field. Fourth and one. Jacksonville, the number two rushing team in the National Football League. On and, fourth and one. And this is actually fourth and about, it's almost one and three quarters. Maurice Jones Drew bounces on his feet, has the first down to the 22. Boy, this crowd, this crowd thought they had him pinned. You could hear them start to scream, and the scream turned into a groan. Talk about being stuffed, but there's no contain on that side. He comes to the near side. No stealer is there. Hey, Mighty Mouse moves the chain. Two minutes to play in Pittsburgh. Hey, a reminder coming up. The Sprint Halftime Report. JB, Dan, Boomer, Shannon, Coach Cower, and all the latest NFL scores and highlights. Getting down to the nitty-gritty important stuff happening around the league. It's all coming up on the Sprint Halftime Report. Seven plays, 46 yards for Jacksonville on this drive. They're in the nitty-gritty right now, too. This is 10. To about the 17. Palomalu and Larry Foote. Boy, Troy Palomalu, what a welcome back addition he is to this Pittsburgh defense. He just brings so much to it. I, it, it again, when a player is that good, let's face it, when the other defenders look around the huddle and he's not there, they know what's missing. It has nothing to do with the guy that took his place. Same thing they're going through right now. Taylor picks his way through the line. They go 12 before he's driven back. And that's very close to a first down for Jacksonville. I was going to say it's a little bit, Greg, like what Pittsburgh is doing now with Aaron Smith being gone. A, a huge loss at defensive end. Boy, how many times did we hear both teams talk about what an underrated football player Aaron Smith is? Every Pittsburgh Steeler we talked to said he is maybe, at his position, the best, one of the best players on our team. The most underrated for sure, and they miss him greatly. He tore a biceps, he had surgery, he's on injured reserve, and he's lost for the year, even the playoffs. All right, now we're going to have a pretty important measurement here for first down. And it is. New set of downs for the Jacksonville Jaguars with a minute 16 to play here in the first half. And Jacksonville is a team that does pretty well in the red zone. 20 of their last 21 red zone possessions have resulted in either a touchdown or a field goal. First and 10 from the 12. Jones Drew deep in the backfield. Play fake. Gerard on the move. Throws at the goal line. Touchdown. Ernest Wilford with his first touchdown catch of the season. Boy, and somehow the Steelers just lost Wilford. <laughs> Larry Foote's arguing that he was out of bounds. That'll be up. That'll be the decision whether to review this by the review booth and the replay affair. Let's take a look at it. We'll give him a little something to. Did he step out of bounds? That's the question. Did he step out of bounds before the ball? First came? choice timeout. Pittsburgh. That's the what's at issue. Timeout. There he looks like he's in. I think pretty definitively that showed that Ernest Wilford never stepped out of bounds. He came close, but it sure looked to me like a clean touchdown. Well, the replay officials upstairs have confirmed to the officials and Gene Steratore on the field that it was indeed a good catch. It is a Jacksonville touchdown. And now, Scobie on to try the extra point. And with 101 to play in the first half, Jacksonville regained the lead. I asked David Garrard yesterday if it was in the game plan to get Ernest Wilford a touchdown. He said, we're working on it. 61 seconds to play in the first half here at Heinz Field and Jacksonville kicking to Allen Rossum. Hits Rossum and he scoops it up at the eight. And goes down at about the 11 yard line by Brian Ewu. Those of you, those of you questioning whether or not that was really a touchdown, Dan. That's Doug Rosenbaum, the field judge. Look at his position. Look at him leaning in, checking out the feet right here of Ernest Wilford. 
That is a good job by the officials being in the right place. They made the good call. And I like the fact it was quickly confirmed by the gentleman upstairs. You don't think Gene Steratore and his crew will be looking for a warm place at halftime, do you? Well, I wonder how come the Pittsburgh, I wonder how the Pittsburgh Steelers defense wasn't looking at all for Ernest Wilford. Well, he was so wide open. Now, Roethlisberger has two timeouts and 56 seconds on the clock, 90 yards away. That's complete to Ward. And he's down to the 17-yard line. Steelers in hurry up. We'll see if they actually try to get something done or if they're just going to run the clock. Roethlisberger throws, and that's complete across the 25. Hines Ward, two quick catches, and Steelers have moved the ball out across the 25. Well, Jacksonville will give Pittsburgh all of those they want. Pittsburgh still has two timeouts. The safeties are very deep for the Jaguars. Roethlisberger throws. And Davenport out of the backfield. He's up to the 30-yard line. And Roethlisberger calls time, stopping the clock. 13 seconds to play in the first half. Back to Ryan Steele in a moment. They've made an adjustment to the clock. There are 15 seconds remaining. And Pittsburgh with one timeout remaining as they operate now from their own 30. Three receivers down here at the bottom. Roethlisberger going to run it. No, throws over the middle. Has his man close to midfield, and that's Antonio Holmes. Lost the football. Steelers pick it up and fall on it at about the 36-yard line. Oh, that still line. rolling around. That ball was still yeah, rolling around, but home. time's expired. So we have come to the end of a very defensive oriented first half. Jacksonville with a late drive, 10 7 lead. We're back with the Sprint Halftime Report after this message and a word from the local station. This is the NFL on CBS. We're at halftime in Pittsburgh, 10 7 Jaguars. We're back after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Field where the snow continues to fall. It is a 10 7 Jacksonville lead. Greg Gumbel along with Dan Deerdorf. This score may surprise some folks around the lead, but listen to these two very interesting bits of information. Jacksonville, the league's 27th best pass defense, has allowed Pittsburgh 40 yards throwing the ball today, and Pittsburgh allows less than 73 yards rushing a game. Jacksonville already has 98 on the ground. Yeah, I think that tells you that Jacksonville has brought a very physical game to Heinz Field. They are going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Pittsburgh, and right now they're winning. They've sacked Ben Roethlisberger three times, and they forced Pittsburgh into, run, uh, into passing the ball so much more than running. Pittsburgh has rushed it 10 times and thrown it 19. That's not the way the Steelers play football. No, it's unusual that, that, that they have actually gone away from what they usually do. I would think we'll at least see them try to run the football again early in the second half. Yo, they've got to try, Greg, but I think in the first half, at the battle at the line of scrimmage was won by the Jacksonville Jaguars. All right, let's take a look at some halftime numbers and see what stands out to you. Rushing yards, Jacksonville in the lead. Total yards, Jacksonville in the lead. Time of possession as well, but the the, uh, the, the encouraging right thing here. for the Steelers is that they're only down three. Exactly right, and uh, uh, the one thing, though, for Jacksonville, it, it's remarkable that they're in the lead considering they have yet to convert a third down. Second half coming your way in high definition here on CBS. I'll say one thing, Greg. Uh, the field has held up pretty well. We have not seen a lot of slipping and sliding. And so far, kudos to the Steelers and their grounds crew for getting this thing. I know it doesn't look like much, but we have not seen guys planting and having big chunks of turf come up. You, come also, up. you also look for inclement weather turnovers. There hasn't been a turnover by his team this, uh, this afternoon. 
We almost had one on the last play of the first half. <laughs> Santonio, Santonio Holmes fumbled that ball, and there was a scramble for it, but it didn't matter who recovered. Well, you time remember, expired. You remember ball bounced right back to Ben Roethlisberger in the first half as well. A good point there after Paul Spicer knocked it loose. Fred Taylor. What have we been calling him the last couple of days? The best football player never to have made the Pro Bowl. It is shocking. You know, Fred Taylor played three or four more years, which would be some accomplishment. But added another couple thousand dollars to his, I mean, a couple thousand yards as we look at that graphic. Fred's not playing for a couple thousand dollars. But if he added a couple thousand yards to his resume, Fred Taylor would be in that Hall of Fame range. <laughs> And never went to a Pro Bowl. That would be beyond belief. Maurice Jones drew deep. Jacksonville will get the football first here in the second half. Jones drew on the run at the eight. A little wedge in front of him. And can't escape the grab of Marquise Cooper. So Greg was talking about Freddie Taylor. I, I, I look at some of the years he's had. Back in 2003, almost 1,600 yards. 2000 almost 1400 but look at the touchdowns you know 12 and 2000 14 of them in the 1998 and none of those seasons was good enough to earn him a pro bowl nod here in the afc well he suffers from playing in the small market town yeah. of jacksonville where he doesn't get quite the pub as others do yeah, never played in a super bowl or any of those things yeah, that makes a difference on first down Taylor will get the call, try and find a hole on that side and nothing there. Casey Hampton. That looked like the Steelers were in the huddle of Jacksonville. Did you see them come up to the line of scrimmage? They overloaded the right side of their defense, and Jacksonville couldn't get out of the play and ran right into it. Look at them all up there. That's exactly where Jacksonville's going to run. Wow, that play is dead before it even gets started. Nice job by Casey Hampton. Going right down the line of scrimmage and making the play. Remember Casey Hampton talking about how he watches the Jacksonville center because Jacksonville pulls its center more than any other team. Yeah, he said Brad Meester really gets out and will lead play. Second and nine. Play fake. Garrard running out of time. Spinning. Still on his feet. And looks and throws it away. Good job by David Garrard. And that's something, and, and, and I really liked Byron Leftwich. He's a good guy. But that's something the Leftwich is incapable of doing. David Garrard saved the sack twice and was able to get out far enough to dump it away. That, that, that was some effort on his part. Look at Casey Hampton. Now that's what a football player looks like, folks. <laughs> David Garrard now trying to do something he hasn't done all day, and that's convert a third down. Jacksonville is 0 for 6 on third down. Maurice Jones drew in the backfield. He needs the 36-yard line for a first down. Garrard over the middle, got his man for a first down. Tight end Mercedes Lewis. Pittsburgh was faking a blitz, but ultimately only came with four guys. Take a look at that. You see, that is really an unusual look. All four of them came from the other side. But right in that level between the linebackers and the safeties, Mercedes Lewis was able to get in there, and Garrard was able to feather it over the top of the linebackers and drop it in in front of the safety. How about Mercedes Lewis looking back over his right shoulder, then turning it up the field and catching it over the left? That's what first-round draft choices are supposed to do. He was the number one last year. On first down now. Play fake to Taylor. Garrard with all kinds of time. He's going to go deep and overthrows Ernest Wilford. Well, Deshay Townsend was right with Wilford all the way. Let's see. Did they come after him with four or five? Just four men and a good job of protecting. Boy, that was great pass protection by the Jacksonville offensive line. Oh, <laughs> look at that hold right there. Oh, did Deshae Townsend get away with one there? He pulled his jersey so hard, it came back almost the foot. Second and ten. Taylor. Hit as he crossed the 45. Spun out to the 47. Chris Hoke, number 76, with the stop. I'll guarantee you Deshae Townsend was expecting to see flags all over the field. He was beaten deeply, 
and he just reached out and snatched the back of Ernest Wilford. When you do that, hey, you're saving a touchdown because you've been beaten. You don't expect to be able to do that and not get flagged. So another third down facing Garrard and the Jaguars. Jacksonville piling up the yards on the ground. Gerard needs the Pittsburgh 45 for a first down. Here come the Steelers to throw over the middle. It's complete and just about a yard shy of the first down as Maurice Jones drew. Man, sometimes as a quarterback, you know it's coming. There is nothing you can do about it, but line up your throw and take it. James Ferrier slices around on a little stunt, crosses over the back, and he comes through unscathed. That's why one of the things coaches like about quarterbacks is toughness. Gerard and the Jaguars are going to go for it on fourth and one. They had one other fourth down opportunity today and converted. Maurice Jones drew for a first down and a little bit more to the 40 yard line. And Greg, I think back to what Mike Tomlin said again about Jack Del Rio and building this team. He goes, he built a team to come north in December and play physical football. They are not a bunch of lightweights from the south. He said he built a heavyweight team to play in this kind of weather, and they, so far in this game, are delivering. We may look back on that fourth down attempt yeah. and talk a little bit about it. Fred Taylor, Greg Jones in the backfield, first and ten. That incomplete intended for Ernest Wilford. Oh, he was there. Wilford was there. Gerard overthrew him. Gerard led him a little too much. Watch Ernest Wilford now again. He's working against Townsend. That's a little skinny post, and he had to break it off because he looked to the inside, and Ant Anthony Smith was there. Ant Anthony Smith in his position really ruined that play. Second and ten. Jones. Man, Clark Hagens came in off the edge and he, I think he put one on David Gerard that time too. He's going to come from the bottom. There's Clark Hagens coming in and that's a mismatch. He's work, working against Mercedes Lewis, the tight end. And Hagens just beats him around the edge and then beats on Gerard at the end of it. A double whammy for Clark Hagens. Now for Jacksonville. Third and We'll call it a yard. It's closer to a half yard away. Well, we know if he doesn't get it on this one, he's going to go for it again. Give it to the first guy, and that's Greg Jones, and he's going to come up short. Well, you gotta, he's going to go for it again. I don't think he'll kick a field goal from this distance. And from the looks of that shot, the wind would be blowing right into Josh Scobie's face. I'd get Maurice Jones through out there. He's the guy that converted both of the other fourth downs. One time with a sensational effort of bouncing off and coming back around the edge. Let's see. Looks like Jacksonville may be looking for a, well, you a can measurement. Get, yeah. When it's that close, you can call for a measurement. And, the officials will almost always give it to you. And it is clearly short. But this is a, you know, tactically, you know, nice job by Jack Del Rio. He gets the time to really think about what he wants to do, what call he's going to make. He knew he was short, but he bought himself about an extra 60 or 90 seconds. So Jacksonville, one out of nine on third down attempts today, two out of two on fourth. And there is 70-year-old Dick LeBeau, the defensive coordinator for Pittsburgh. He's been to a few rodeos. Fourth and one. The backfield consists of Maurice Jones, Drew, and Greg Jones. Gerard going to keep it and get the first down. Easily. A nice change of pace. Yeah, look at Jack. That's, that's what I like. 
winning it at the line of scrimmage. And right now, the Jacksonville offensive line is on their game. Look at this surge. Look at them blowing Kirchke back. That is that is an excellent piece of work by the guys in white. And you said it before, Dan, the Jacksonville offensive line is controlling this game so far. Yep, you're right. Fred Taylor back in. First down. Gerard to throw. Over the middle, and that comes up short and a little behind Mercedes Lewis. You know, one of the things I really like, even though their offensive line is so dominant, is that they're not afraid to throw the ball on first down. Now, that time ended up with an incompletion, and yeah, this is the downside of it. You're faced with a second, second and ten. But you would put a defense back on its heels a little bit when you're unpredictable enough to the point where you're comfortable throwing on first down. Thirteenth play of this drive. Side of no incomplete. Reggie Williams had it and dropped it. It'll be third and ten. And that's a pretty high completion. Just a little hook pattern inside. That's a 90% completion rate on a pattern like that. Williams has got to hold on to that football. There are no gimmies in the field goal department here today. No, and it's starting to snow just a little bit heavier than it has been. Jacksonville has been woeful on third down, but they lead the game by three on the draw. Maurice Jones drew inside the 20, inside the 15, to about the 11-yard line and a first down. Well, there's one for everybody that says, well, why in the heck do they run a draw play on third and 10? Everybody in the world knows that's what's coming. Well, you got to stop it. Right here, he's going to run through a tackle. He runs through two tackles, and then he drags McFadden all the way in. Look at Maurice Jones through. Look at his feet. Again, he doesn't throw it way out there where he loses traction. He's running like a guy who's really got experience on his turf, keeping his legs underneath. Him. I think that's the first ball play of the day. Fred Taylor, right side, tries to cut back, gets maybe a yard on the play. Travis Kirschke, Larry Foote making the stop. There's Kennedy Pola. He's the Jacksonville running back coach. He's kind of conflicted here today. Of course, he's doing his job. But his nephew is Troy Polamalu, who's on the field right now for the Steelers. They talk every week. They're extremely close. But Cole is a competitor just like his nephew. It's all business right now. Second and nine. Gerard throwing and bobbled and incomplete. Maurice Jones Drew had himself a touchdown. And in a tight, scratchy kind of football game. You don't get that many opportunities for a touchdown. And Jacksonville just left one on the table right here. Perfect throw. And again, Maurice Jones Drew doesn't catch it with his hands. That ball drills him right in the chest. And he's not able to handle it. Got to catch with your hands. Third and nine. Look at look at number 32. Half the side of Tony Pasco. Jacksonville can get a first down without getting a touchdown. Gerard throwing. Jones Drew back again to the end zone and a touchdown. No, they're going to call him short. Well, he was just dragging Ike Taylor. Ike Taylor was wrapped all over Maurice Jones Drew, trying to keep him from the end zone. Well, talk about coming right back to him. Look at that. That's There's Taylor. Polamalu, he's trying to wrestle him down. But watch Maurice Jones Drew drive. I you see his shoulders were across the goal line, but they're right. The football wasn't. First and goal. Jones Drew. Not now. It's not yet. Second and goal. You know, that spot, I think, was really an outstanding job by the officials. 
because a lot of Maurice Jones drew ended up in the end zone, but the football was back by his hip. Dan, how about Jacksonville coming right back to Maurice Jones drew the same play on which he dropped the pass? Yeah, well, he's a playmaker. You got to come back to him. <laughs> you, you don't send Maurice Jones through to the doghouse. No, I don't think so. Second and goal. Even though he could walk in one without, without having to bend over. Gerard had a quarterback sneak earlier in this draft. Out in the flat, and that's not going to work either. Palomalu cuts down Greg Jones. Wow. Why? That, that's a tough one there, where you run a play where you risk losing yardage, which is exactly what Jacksonville did. They lost a good two yards on this play. Watch him. Low into the knees. No need to wrap up when you take a guy's legs out that cleanly. Look at the closing speed of Troy Polamalu. Man, that's what makes him a special player. Lots of most guys can't even dream of doing that. 20th play of this drive, third and goal. Gerard throwing far side, touchdown. Reggie Williams. And again, the Steelers secondary gives Jacksonville an easy touchdown because they can't, they let somebody loose. Now we have a Prime penalty marker pass. on the field. Holding, defense, number 24. Penalty is declined. Touchdown. Penalty is on Ike Taylor holding. That's declined. The touchdown stands. Remember in the other side of the end zone how open Ernest Wilford was for a touchdown. Here in what looks like a pretty good, well, we'll call it a confusion play instead of a pick. But you run a couple guys to the inside. The secondary gets a little confused. They got to run around people. You end up with a wide open guy for a touchdown. Scobie. Lost the handle, Podlez lost the handle, and the Jaguars fall on it. The conversion attempt is no good. Podlez had a little trouble earlier and recovered, but not this one. And we have a penalty marker on the field. Boy, that was a good snap. It was a perfect snap right on the hands. I did, I did not, territory is conferring. I did not see the flag thrown. Although you couldn't see it on the field anyway, as littered as it is. Say one thing, neither team is left. They're both still out there. The Gene. There is no foul for leverage on the play. The result is an unsuccessful try. Timeout. So the score stands at 16 to 7. Jacksonville. You don't see that very often. <laughs> 20 no. plays, 74 yards, 9 minutes and 40 seconds in duration. That's the longest drive in Jaguars franchise history, and they grab a 16 to 7 lead. And keep in mind, they converted two fourth downs in that drive to keep it going. And uh, folks, I'm telling you, you don't see a 20 play drive very often. I played 13 years in this league. I, I guarantee you, I never was on the field for a 20 play drive. You see 16 and 17, and that's that's very long. 20 is extraordinary. You might need a breather on the sideline after one of those. But how long is it? Uh, how long has it been since Ben Roethlisberger got to play a little football? Nine minutes and 40 seconds. Well, and then halftime and everything. <laughs> Lamont Thompson going to hold for Scobie. And Najee Davenport. Going to let this one go into and through the end zone. And so Roethlisberger and the Steelers down by nine. Will start from their own 20-yard line. 520 to play in the third. Welcome back to Heinz Field where Mike Tomlin's probably going to find out a little bit about his Pittsburgh Steelers right here. 520 to play in the third quarter. 37 minutes since Ben Roethlisberger has been on the field. On first down, he's going to throw. Under pressure, and he goes down. Bobby McCray starting today because of the injury to Marcus Stroud. Yeah, keep in mind, yeah, I mean, two of the real stalwarts on the Jacksonville defensive line are not playing to look at that move he puts on Marvell Smith. Wow, he just whiffs him to the inside. 
beats Marvell to the inside. Then it's a straight shot to Big Ben. Man, without either Reggie Hayward or Stroud, this front four is playing lights out. Fourth sack of the day at Roethlisberger. Here's Willie Parker. Parker spinning and gets out to about the 15-yard line as the numbers on the field start to get a little obscured. Yeah, the snow is coming down just about twice as hard now as it was at the beginning of the game. Dan, we're getting very close to that point where, where I'll say stopped at the, you tell me, yeah. Dan. Yes, I know. Third and 14. Washington is intended receiver a bit too high. Washington couldn't come down with it, and the Steelers go three and out. He had Nate wide open. Ben had him, and this ball just gets away from him. It's just a little too high. Washington was really there, and Ben just couldn't control the throw. Keep in mind, Ben has a bad shoulder. He did not throw all week in practice. Very, very difficult to not do that and then come out and be accurate in the game. Sepulveda kicks it away. North cut. On the run to 43 and down at the 46-yard line. We have just a tad under four minutes to play in the third Jacksonville. 16-7 lead. And there's one of our cameramen, John Bruno, wearing shorts. Great decision. <laughs> David Garrard. All kinds of time, going to throw it deep for Northcutt. He's got it. Inside the five. Touchdown, Jacksonville. <laughs> David Garrard's mobility made all the difference in the world. Ike Taylor, Anthony Smith, the two defenders. And you're right, the mobility, and boy, does he air this out. Anthony Smith had the primary coverage, lost the football, and became disoriented. Northcutt, being the veteran that he is, stayed with it, and Dennis Northcutt gives David Garrard a big play. Three touchdown passes on the day for Garrard. That's where the ball's in the air. Who's going to make a play on it? Northcutt delivered. Podlesh will try to handle the snap. Did a good job that time. He pulled it. Kobe pulled it to the left. It remains 22-7. David Garrard and the Jacksonville Jaguars doing a pretty good job on offense today. Forty-seven to play in the third quarter. Anthony Smith, the second-year safety out of Syracuse, has not had a great week, Dan. No, he has not. He made the prediction that they were going to beat New England, had a bad game in New England, and then he was the primary victim on that touchdown. Through the hands of Najee Davenport and into the end zone, where it will be a touchback. 3.43 to play. Pittsburgh Steelers looking to get something going. The 22-7 deficit has led some Steeler fans to rise to their feet and head for the exit. Now, earlier this year, Pittsburgh trailed Cleveland by 15 as well, and they came back to win that game 31-28. You don't see that every day here in Pittsburgh. This group is pretty sophisticated, awfully loyal. They stay to the end, but they're bailing today. Roethlisberger from the shotgun to try to start to get some of it back. Out of the backfield, completes to Willie Parker, and Parker with the clock moving and coming up on three and a half minutes to play. And smartly, Ben Roethlisberger is going to run it at the line of scrimmage. Some kind of a shakeup really necessary for Pittsburgh. Anything to energize the old gang, get them playing ball, because they have been lethargic. Give the Jacksonville defense an awful lot of credit for that. Yes, sir. Roethlisberger, Roethlisberger to the far side of the field and complete to Cedric Wilson and a derisive cheer coming down from the Steeler fan. Yeah, I mean, folks, there's 18 minutes and 10 seconds of football left in regulation here. This is hardly an insurmountable deficit. That's right, they didn't leave. 
Of course, I'm not sure they know where they are. They may never. <laughs> they may never leave. This is their last home game in the regular season. Pittsburgh, a perfect 7 and 0 at home so far. On the move. They got rid of the alive. football. Looks like a live foot. No, it now, it's, now it's ruled incomplete. Boy, that was really, really close. Ben comes over the sidelines to wipe off his gloves when he takes a hit like that and they get some snow on him there. They get slippery. Is his arm moving forward? Ball's going to come up in the air. Oh, yeah. clearly, yeah. He was that motion was going away from us here in the press box. Couldn't see it as clearly as you can see it right there. Looked more like a jump shot than a yeah. forward pass. It wasn't that much of a forward pass off. Second and ten. <laughs> With time over the middle, almost intercepted. Daryl Smith coming across the middle, had his hands on it to JB in New York. James. Hey, Greg and Dan, Kansas City has been giving Tennessee absolute fits in this one, but take a look. Vince Young, pump fakes, goes up top to Roy Dell Williams, 42 yards, second touchdown reception of the day. Tennessee out in front by three, late in the third. Back to Greg Gumble and Dan Deardorff. All right, Dan, of course, our JB in the. Uh, the uh, Tennessee outcome of an awful lot of interest to the Jacksonville Jaguars. And that wild card hunt. Third and ten. Walker's <laughs> Burger on the move again. Throws over the middle, incomplete, intended for Heinz Ward, who went down hard. Man, this crowd is getting nasty. Not every day you hear Ben Roethlisberger and Heinz Ward being booed by the crowd. Now Ben again buys some time by moving out of the pocket. He's so good at this. Throws back across his body. Once again, Sepulveda to kick to Dennis Northcutt. He'll let this one bounce inside the 30, and it'll roll inside the 25 to about the 22. 2.18 to play in the third. We were talking about Anthony Smith earlier, Dan. Yes, it's been uh, it's been a long eight days for Anthony Smith. The flea flicker last week. Randy Moss gets behind him, and he's too late getting. I'm sorry, that wasn't Moss. But again, here again, he loses track of the ball. That was Jabbar Gaffney, not Randy Moss. But again, Anthony Smith, when the ball is in the air, has difficulty reacting to it. That time, he just totally lost it. Saw it, but couldn't react to it. Dennis Northcutt was zeroed in on it. We had a late flag. That would have been a heck of a play by Randy Moss to have both thrown it back to Tom Brady and then gotten all the way down there and caught the pass. That, he, I know he's fast. But <laughs> Sepulveda is going to kick this ball again. And Jacksonville looking for a better result than the one they had before where the ball came to rest at the 22-yard line. Across the 30 to the 32, so they gain about 10 yards on the re-kick. Tonight, on 60 Minutes, you'll be surprised what Yankee third baseman Alex Rodriguez has to say about the new steroid scandal. That's coming up tonight on 60 Minutes, here on CBS. Well, Pittsburgh right now is finding out what is pretty obvious, and that is it's a whole lot easier to hold a lead as these conditions begin to deteriorate than it is to try to make a comeback. You know, we were just talking about Anthony Smith, Mike Tomlin. We asked Mike Tomlin, uh, how big are you on predictions? He said, I'm not a fan of it. No, no. I bet you right now, Jack Del Rio is looking at the sky, hoping it gets worse and worse. That works in Jacksonville's favor. Jacksonville, 10 minutes better in time of possession, and Fred Taylor still on his feet and pulls his way for a first down. Boy, that, that single play has pretty much been representative of what we've seen all day. And that is, it's been a game physically dominated 
by Jacksonville. I, it's not that it's not that Pittsburgh is rolling over or not playing hard, but they are not matching the physical presence that the Jaguars have brought up here from Florida. They, when Jack Del Rio said this is a two chin strap game to his team, they bought into it. On first down. to the outside. And he comes up just short of midfield. And this is against a Steeler defense right now that has got eight guys on the line of scrimmage. Troy Polamalu is right on the line. No pretense of playing pass coverage. They're doing everything they could do to keep Jacksonville from running the football. Dan, it's against it's, a Steeler defense that came into this game number one in the National Football League. Well, I'm telling you right now, I'd be surprised if, if Jack Del Rio, if he wanted to run a play-action pass, I think he might I think he might hit Pater. Jacksonville up to 146 yards rushing. Straight ahead. Maurice Jones drew first down. That is so frustrating for Dick LeBeau and his Steeler defense. That'll take us to the end of the third quarter. And wow, is that impressive. Keep in mind, this is a team that already this quarter ran a 20-play drive. Jacksonville, with oh. touchdowns on its last three possessions, allows the time to wind down here in the third quarter. That's the end of three. Jacksonville leads Pittsburgh 22-7. Back to Heinz Field after this message. And a word from your local station. This is the NFL on CBS. Craig Gumbel, Dan Deerdorf, and the rest of our CBS sports crew back at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh. Je Dan, you and I were just revisiting some words from Jack Del Rio yesterday. He told his team, we're flying back regardless of what happens. But just remember, what happens in those three hours before that, you're taking that home with you. Just think about what you want to have sitting next to you on the way home. Here's Taylor. And he gets a couple. This is a, you know, this Jacksonville team. And again, you know, we're not awarding a victory to Pittsburgh here. Not after last week when we saw San Diego come back from 14 down and, and go into overtime. But this, this Jacksonville team, let's face it, there's not a lot of star power on this team. And, and yet, they just are an in-your-face football team. You, you, you really, you, you do have to admire the fact that they're not exactly a team full of Brett Favre. Play fake, Taylor, Garrard on the move and throws and intercepted. On the way back is Anthony Smith. Smith down the sideline with a couple of players to beat. He's down just short of the 10 yard line. Well, there's a little redemption. This ball sails on David Garrard. He comes out. Clark Higgins is in his face, and he might have forced some of that, but that ball floated and sailed, and Anthony Smith couldn't believe it. Here it came, served right up to him on a, on a beautiful little silver platter. For only the second time all season, David Garrard has been intercepted. And that's only the ninth interception of the entire year for the Steelers secondary. They've been woeful in that department. From the 13-yard line, Willie Parker. Wow. For a couple to the 11, John Henderson with the stop. That significance was a quarterback who doesn't throw interceptions being picked off by a secondary that doesn't get any interceptions. Yeah, take a look at that. Went 230 without one. And right now, instead of just grinding away on the clock, all of a sudden they're backed up and Pittsburgh's on the verge getting back in this thing. Second and nine. Roethlisberger pumps fake, pulls it down, pulls it down again. On the move, looking, looking, throws, end zone, incomplete. Oh, Heath Miller. Heath Miller had it. 
Well, there's nothing wrong with Ben Roethlisberger's shoulder on that throw. No, and there's nothing wrong with his legs because look how he buys all this time on the run, on the move, a perfect, and I mean perfect pass to Heath Miller. That's got to be frustrating. That's got to be, but you got to get right back at it. And David I wouldn't hesitate to come back to Heath Miller. David Garrard looking on from the sideline. Third and nine. Boy, everybody's to the right. Four receivers bunched to the right of the field. Roethlisberger, quick pass. That is complete. And into the end zone. Touchdown. Heinz Ward. Man, you don't see that formation every day. Four receivers overloaded to the near side of the field. And he just knifes one in to Heinz Ward. Take a look at that. Daryl Smith was right beside him, but not in a position to make the play. Sammy Knight was right behind him. Boy, that was a well-designed play. And what do you know? There might be a few people in the parking lot running back in. Reed with the kick. It is good. David Garrard's interception sets up Pittsburgh and their chance to pull closer. 13-11 to play in the fourth quarter. Back in 1978, one Terry Bradshaw threw 28 touchdown passes to set the Steelers franchise record for TD passes in a season. Roethlisberger has just tied it with his 28th touchdown throw this year. Jacksonville 22, Pittsburgh 14. Maurice Jones-Drew is deep. Brought down at about the 31 and 32 yard line. It's a nice thing to set records. It's another thing to be a leader. Ben Roethlisberger telling his offensive line, we can win this thing. 13.05 to play. Suddenly, Steeler fans are back into it. The ones who stayed are making some noise. Taylor. For maybe a yard. Once again, the playoff situation for the Pittsburgh Steelers. They clinch a playoff berth with a win or a Buffalo loss or Tennessee loss. Buffalo is losing, Tennessee is winning. They clinch the AFC North with a victory here and a Cleveland loss. Cleveland is winning. Second and nine, and Maurice Jones-Drew is in. Play fake. Gerard, and that's complete right at the first down marker to Dennis Northcutt. Did I see Maurice Jones-Drew pick up a blitzer and you hit him hard? most certainly did. You most certainly did. Mighty Mouse. Fake Farrier comes in. Foot comes in. Absolutely beautiful blocking. And a good low throw to Northcutt. Well, that ball is right at the first down marker, and we'll get a measurement with 12.09 to play. Again, even though he threw an interception on his last possession, you got to come back to your quarterback. You got to have confidence enough in him to let him put it in the air, even in these bad conditions. And again, this field is holding up. This field is holding up pretty well. First down. Right now to New York. JB, what do you got, James? Greg and Dan, what we have, Brett Favre, yet another record on this completion to Donald Driver. He now becomes the all-time leader. Most passing yards in a career surpassing our own Dan Marino. The record was 61,361. It's now Brett Favre's. And by the way, pack on top by 16 and a fourth. Greg and Dan. All right, J.B., and as you well know, the Packers can clinch a first-round bye with a win, and if Seattle should lose. First down. 
Taylor. Cuts it back. Still on his feet. First down yardage for Fred Taylor. He goes over 100 yards rushing on the day. Man, Fred Taylor, 31 years old, 10th year in this league, and he's still got the ability to make people miss the way he does. Dan, it's his fourth straight 100-yard rushing game, and Pittsburgh has allowed only 200-yard rushers over the last 63 games. Taylor now at 108. Well, look at that move he put on there. It took Troy Polamalu coming all the way over to cut his legs out from underneath him. Still light on his feet. And a powerful man is Fred Taylor. Taylor again. Picking his way through. To about the 45-yard line. Jacksonville. And you can make a good case for Jacksonville coming back and reestablishing itself. Uh, a, a three and out would have been disastrous. The crowd and everybody, it was... And if you notice how quiet things got around here, that's what a couple runs and first downs will do for you. And a really good pass from David Garrard to Dennis Northcutt. Yeah, all of a sudden, the towels aren't flying so much. Second and three. Taylor, nowhere to go. Third and three. I think the Jacksonville offensive line is making a statement too by not wearing any uh, long sleeve shirts. You notice they're all out there with a lot of skin showing. <laughs> does that really does that really make a difference to the opposition? Uh, He's not wearing you know, short sleeves. You he know must what? Be... Uh, it's just it's in your own mind. But I'm sure it's something they talked about. Then what are we what are we to make oh, of that fan know. who was bare chested out there uh, with the number seven? You know, just up. because you don't like the cold, don't knock guys who just show how tough they are. Mike Taylor is out of the game with an injured right knee. His return is questionable. Gerard, quick drop, throws through into traffic, and it's incomplete. Well, he really tried to force that into Wilford, and there was a lot of traffic. Steelers were bracketing Ernest Wilford, and David Gerard, looking at him the whole time, went to him anyway. Oof. High, high chance of an interception there. Larry Foot on one side, Anthony Smith on the other. All right, snaps and handling of the football. No gimmies today. Podlet grabs it, kicks it. Cedric Wilson says, let it go. And it floats out of bounds just inside the 20 yard line. We'll take a break. Well, we're back in Pittsburgh. You know, it's a one-possession game. This is why Jacksonville failed to convert on two extra points. One a drop by Adam Podlish, and then on the other, Scobie misses it. And we have an eight-point ball game as a result. A touchdown and a successful two-pointer ties this up. Willie Parker. From the left side, has some blocking in front of him. And has a first down. Out to about the 27 or 28-yard line. Boy, his instincts don't fail him when he wants to bounce it to the outside. Man, this guy is like a ping pong ball. Starts one and then he just gets back to the outside and he breaks contain. Man, he's got fine instincts running the football. Boy, it says something when you know what the guy's going to do and he still does it. First down. Roethlisberger throws. And that is incomplete. Hines Ward, the intended receiver, it'll be second and ten. And you saw Ben go, my fault. He threw the ball low. Nothing Hines could do about that. Pittsburgh's touchdowns have come, and they began in Jacksonville territory. Their other eight drives ended in seven punts in the end of the half. Now on second and ten, and Roethlisberger makes some adjustments. Straight drop, running out of time, and got rid of it. This is Parker. Parker, the first down yardage, and much more. Into Jacksonville territory to the 44-yard line. Ben Roethlisberger, you are a stud. 
You are a big, strong stud. He's got Jacksonville guys hanging all over him. There is no way this is nothing but a sack. And Ben Roethlisberger finds Willie Parker with a little flip. Man, that was... <laughs> And as he shuffled uh -huh. that backward, that goes down as a 27-yard run. Now here's Parker again. Parker wrapped up by Henderson and Daryl Smith. Again, look at Roethlisberger on that last play. Totally wrapped up, being driven the other way. And has the awareness to be able to get rid of that ball. And you know, when you get rid of the ball like that, you know you're not going to be able to get that arm back in time to protect yourself when you fall. Second and ten, Roethlisberger spreads the field. Under pressure. On the move and down he goes. Brent Hawkins. Fifth sack of the day of Roethlisberger. Well, I know that I know that Big Ben did not practice last week with that sore right shoulder. I can't imagine what that shoulder is going to feel like tonight. I, it, he has taken a lot of hard hits. You saw him look behind him. He couldn't see Hawkins. Hawkins was coming in so low. Ben looked back over his shoulder, and I'm not sure he caught sight of it. Hawkins got off the turf to make that sack. Sure did. Third and 18. You notice Pittsburgh without a sack today on David Garrard. Got the playoff in time. Roethlisberger throws. That's complete to Santonio Holmes. Holmes for a first down. Well, there was a laser from Ben. They needed 18. They got 19. I think that right shoulder's just getting warmed up. Santonio San Holmes working against the zone. Man, you could see that ball came in there like lightning. First down now. Here comes Parker. Right side. Twists his way to about the 30-yard line. Brian Williams, Sammy Knight making the stop. 6.20 to play in the fourth. And it's all about ball security now, Greg. If you catch the ball or you're running with the ball, you have got to put it away. You know they're going for the strip. The ball is wet. This would be a bad time to put it on the ground. Willie Parker now, 14 carries for 100 yards. Roethlisberger to throw on second and six. Going to go deep. Has a man open. It is a touchdown. Oh, and he's injured. Nate Washington. Oh, immediately grabbing his left knee. Dropped a couple today. Held on to that one. Oh, but he's hurt. Oh, he's trying to get up. Nate, stay there. Just... All right, there he is working against Brian Williams. Williams gives him a release like he's expecting some sort of safety help. Williams almost ushers him past him. Look how heavily that left leg comes down right there. Oh, right there. Oh, you could see it really flex. Third touchdown pass of the day for Roethlisberger. 29 on the year sets a new Steeler record. Oh, yeah. He really stretched that knee when he... Had it at a really awkward position. And Here now comes the two-pointer. The two-point conversion. Parker in the backfield. The give is to Cedric Wilson. He throws and it's good. Santonio Holmes on the receiving end. Pittsburgh Steelers have outscored Jacksonville 15 nothing in the fourth quarter extra points missed by Jacksonville have come back to haunt them 546 to play we're tied at 22 Scott Starks is deep and we'll take it at the 10 a little bit of running room closes up quickly as James Harrison makes the tackle. Well, you can call it a gadget play, a trick play, whatever you want to call it. There goes the pitch. 
And Cedric Wilson, a high school quarterback, turned into a receiver at Tennessee. A little behind to San Antonio Holmes, but plenty good enough. A nice tight spiral. And we've seen worse yep. passes today. Yes, we have seen a lot worse passes today. Well, Holmes is so wide open. Rasheen Mathis kind of loses him and lets him go. Mathis was acting like he was expecting a safety to pick him up. Now let's see how Jacksonville responds. Play fake to Fred Taylor. Galan over the middle and hits his man. Well, Mercedes I, Lewis across the 45. And a, what a strike by David Garrard. But Greg, you know, if you're if you're Jacksonville, you got to be thinking touchdown. I mean, you failed on two extra points. You can't be thinking that you're going to be successful trying to kick a field goal. Against the zone, he got it to Lewis. He didn't catch it cleanly, but he oh. held it enough. The line of scrimmage to Jacksonville 47. And on first down, everybody looking for the ground game. Gerard threw a strike to Lewis. Here comes the run blitz. Fred Taylor, right side. Waits for his blocking. Across midfield, inside. Hey, the Pittsburgh 45 to the 44. Again, that offensive line of Jacksonville really with a good surge. Boy, they really got after it. Maurice Williams, Pachos. Fred Taylor, 124 yards rushing on the day. 425 to play in the fourth. You know, that's you've earned it when you do that against Pittsburgh. Taylor squeezes through. Still on his feet. And finally down inside the 35 to about the 32-yard line. You know, that's the problem with Pittsburgh selling out the way they are at the line of scrimmage. They're coming in on these run blitzes, and there's not much backing it up. That's a high-risk defense they're playing because if you bust one, you're gone. How surprised were you, Dan, to hear Fred Taylor say, for this offseason, he decided to go and work out on his own. He did. He said, I've got a whole new diet, a whole new way of taking care of myself. It's paying off. On first down, Maurice Jones-Drew and not fair. James Harrison with the stop. There's the place kicker, Josh Scobie. And I don't, in these conditions, if they were at the 10-yard line, I'd give it nothing better than 50-50. The hold has been the problem for Jacksonville today. Yeah, they got plenty of time, three minutes. You got to think touchdown if you're Jacksonville. You don't want to have to rely on the kicking game. Second and 10. Gerard going to throw. Post pattern just behind Matt Jones. It'll be third and 10. Oh, David Gerard would like another chance at that. He would like another chance at this. Big, giant Matt Jones at 6'6 is open, and the ball is way behind him. Way behind him. Wow. Jones was wide open. Gerard, 17 of 33 for 197 yards, three touchdowns and an interception. Third and 10. On the draw, Jones through, first down yardage and more. Inside the 15-yard line, first down Jacksonville. Again, on third and long, we see a draw play become a big play. Jones through and check it out. Great blocking up front. He catches Pittsburgh totally off guard look at the size of this opening in the middle there's polamalu who gets run out of the play over pursues it he is so mad at himself mercedes lewis with the block on polamalu first down jacksonville the give is to fred taylor and with that we come to the two-minute warning Two minutes to play in Pittsburgh.
tie game. Jacksonville knocking on the door. Well, we're back with 2.02 to play. The Pittsburgh Steelers called a timeout prior to the two-minute warning. Again, when you can call a timeout from the sidelines, you know, only one guy knows it, and that's the, the line judge to that side, and he calls it off, and everyone else on the field is operating as if uh, a play is going on or the clock's still running. The Pittsburgh Steelers. The number one defense in the league as play began today, giving up 245 yards a game. Jacksonville has totaled 412 yards on offense. I wouldn't have thought it. I would not have thought it. There are 215 rushing yards. That's just that's just mind-boggling. Second and eight. Taylor to the five touchdown. What a performance by the Jacksonville offensive line. I can't recall the last time I've seen the Pittsburgh Steelers manhandled to this extent up front defensively. And manhandled is the right word. Khalif Barnes and Vince Manaway and Brad Meester. Maurice Williams, Tony Pachos, Mercedes Lewis, the tight end. These guys, Greg Jones at fullback, they are getting it done. Now, a little drama. Yes, sir. The extra point attempt. Bartlett puts it down. Scobie puts it through. 12 yards by Fred Taylor, and Jacksonville comes back strong to regain the lead. Two-minute warning, 157 to play. You want to wrap up on the postseason situation. The Subway Post Game Show. JB, Dan, Boomer, Shannon, Coach Cower, all the latest NFL scores and highlights. That's all coming up on the Subway Post Game Show. I know Bill Cower is back in the studio watching this going, whoa. Is that my is that my group out there getting run on like this? You just don't come into Pittsburgh and run against the Steelers the way Fred Taylor and the Jaguars have done today. Taylor. Not, not when you know it's coming. You can't stop it. Dante Davenport from the 11. Huge play and a big hole up the middle, and look at him go out to about the 42 yard line. Welcome to those of you joining us here at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, along with Dan Deerdorf. I'm Greg Gumbel. Jacksonville has just taken a 29-22 lead on Pittsburgh. David Garrard, Fred Taylor, and the rest of the Jacksonville offense have been magnificent in the snow here today. Pittsburgh now trying to get something going. They've had two touchdowns in their last two possessions. Five times today and almost intercepted there. And we welcome still more of you joining us here in Pittsburgh. What a day it has been for Fred Taylor. A season-high 25 rushes, a season-high 147 yards rushing against the number one defense in the National Football League. And in a lot of situations where Pittsburgh knew it was coming, they stacked the line of scrimmage, and they still couldn't stop Jacksonville from running the ball. Pittsburgh now with a minute 47 and two timeouts to try to tie this game. Roethlisberger, the far side of the field, that is low and incomplete. Keith Miller, incomplete. It'll be third and ten. Really difficult conditions today. And Ben Roethlisberger has had to move out of the pocket a bunch of times. As Greg told you, a lot of times he wasn't able to get out, sacked five times, under duress a lot of others. Again, the line of scrimmage up and down for most of the this game has been won by the guys in the white jerseys from Jacksonville. And bad weather or not, of our seven touchdowns today, six have come via the pass. Third and ten. Roethlisberger on the move, fakes the throw. 
across midfield and into Jacksonville territory. The ball is blown dead at about the 48-yard line of the Jaguars, and it appears to be enough for a first down. The clock still runs. Pittsburgh trying really quickly to get organized. And sore right shoulder or not, Ben Roethlisberger has played his heart out today. First down from the 48. Roethlisberger pulls it down twice, then throws. That's complete to Davenport. Got to take a timeout here. And we do get a whistle on the timeout. Well, there's Fred Taylor, who's had an active day. To say the very least, for 31-year-old running back, Fred's having one heck of a season. He is the all-time leading rusher against the Pittsburgh Steelers. They just get tormented by this guy. He's at 147 today. He doesn't want another chance. He wants to get on the airplane and head for Florida. But Jack Del Rio, you know, whatever happens to this game, if if they end up losing it, he he has built a football team that's able to come north and compete in weather like this. Mike Tomlin, the coach of the Steelers, brought it up. He said, when you look at Jacksonville, they are not your typical southern team. They're big, they're physical, and they look like they came from the north country. We were also advised that this was going to be a two chin strap game. By Mr. Del Rio, who in his playing career enjoyed it. He was a head knocker. Second and seven. Pittsburgh has one timeout remaining. 63 seconds on the clock. Roethlisberger steps up. Throws this side. Incomplete. Santonio Holmes cutting to the sideline. Third and seven. Oh, and Ben's holding his arm. I, I, boy, his gloves are wet. See, this is a time I wonder about using the gloves. When they get that wet... Ben's made the decision, and in a bad weather, he likes to wear both gloves. David Garrard on the other side, he said, I go barehanded. I don't care what the temperature is. But Ben sure looked at his gloves that time like they were the culprit. Third and seven. Roethlisberger waits, waits, throws over the middle and complete. Cedric Wilson, the intended receiver, and now fourth and seven. You would think Jacksonville's defense needs to stand tall one more time to secure a win. And keep in mind, they're missing a lot of key defensive people that you know they'd love to work into that rotation. Reggie Hayward not available. Marcus Stroud's on IR. Their starting middle linebacker, Mike Peterson, he's out with a hand injury. Jack Del Rio playing shorthanded defensively. And they've come up big. Fourth and seven. Roethlisberger out here to Miller. Miller looking for the first down. Did he get there? He is marked down and looks close to the first down. But let's see where it ends up. Boy, that was designed to go to Heath Miller the whole time. He started in the backfield and just flared out. And boy, did he sell out trying to get it. This spot makes all the difference in the world. If it's short, Jacksonville takes over on downs. Jaguars are convinced that he came up short. Well, the chains don't have to travel very far, and he's well short. Gene Steratore makes the indication. Ball goes over to Jacksonville. They have to run 41 seconds off the clock, and then they move to 10 and 4 on the season. The Steelers undefeated at home in the first. Yes, this this is a reviewable play, and I think this is smart to go ahead and the call came down from upstairs. Go ahead and look at it. Make sure the spot's correct. Let's, let's watch where the football, not where Heath Miller is. Where's the football when he hits the ground? He's not hit the ground yet. There he hits the ground. His Boy. elbow actually dug a hole in the turf, didn't it? 
And in this snowy weather, it's going to be so tough. See, his hand doesn't put him down. The hand doesn't put him down. Look, his elbow dug a hole. Where? His elbow is leaving a little mark. Wow. See, he's still up, still up. Right there, he's down. I'm trying to see Rasheed if the, Mathis with the hit. I'm trying to see if the official has enough evidence to move the football farther forward. I would not want to be in his position. Jack Del Rio pacing on the far side. And I mean, Mike Tomlin on the near side. What Mike Tomlin needs is for the replay official to say, move the ball forward about eight inches. And that would give him a first down. Wow, this is this this is microsurgery in terms of what the reflect what the review officials having to do upstairs. Again, the hand doesn't put him down. And again, you can't see yard markers on the field no. because of the snow. Haven't been able to for quite some time today. Here comes Gene Starr. He's got to have seen evidence that 100% tells him that the spot on the field was wrong. After review, the ruling on the field stands. The runner is one half yard short of a first down. It will be Jackson Mills ball, first and ten. And with that, Jacksonville has the chance to put it away now. And I don't, I don't, looking, you know, we looked at it over and over and over. I don't see how you could have called down there and said the spot on the field was wrong. And Jack Del Rio is one happy guy if they're able to sit on the football here without mishandling it. And the Steelers, who've been undefeated at home this year, 7-0 coming into today. For the first time, are going to lose in front of the hometown faithful. A lot of whom, by the way, hit the road before they scored two touchdowns. Before they made their comeback. <laughs> There's a snap and the kneel down. And one more of those. Oh, we have a timeout. Pittsburgh uses their last. Third charge timeout. Pittsburgh, 30-second timeout. Greg, I just want to do something right now. I, I want to compliment Ben Roethlisberger playing hurt, taking a beating, the way he competed to the very end of this ball game. Very little practice this week. Uh, none whatsoever in terms of throwing the ball hard and the way he came out and played. Now, congratulations to Ben individually. As a collective group, how can you praise the Jaguars enough for how physical they were today, Greg, and the way they came in and dominated the line of scrimmage on both sides? Now, Tennessee beat Kansas City today. Jacksonville clinching a playoff spot will have to wait. Did Miami win today? They're tied up. They're, They're going overtime. to overtime. <laughs> Meanwhile, that's going to wrap things up here at Heinz Field. What an impressive, impressive performance by the Jacksonville Jaguars. They jumped to the lead. They saw Pittsburgh come back to tie them, and they came right back and scored the winning touchdown. They win it, 29-22. Up next, the Subway Post Game Show for Dan Deardorff, for all of us at CBS Sports. Greg Gumbel saying so long from Pittsburgh. This is the NFL on CBS.